Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Outspec Podcast. This is part two of a series we just kicked off, um, basically looking at the electric cars Europe gets that we don't in the States. Um, and we hope to maybe do some of these for other regions of the world as well. We are a diversified world, which includes the diversity of car options. And maybe it's always that factor of grass is always greener on the other side, but it feels like all the cars I want are ones I don't have and can't have because laws course in 25 years all these things we're talking about will be import legal some of them sooner because they've been around for a bit but um yeah so take a look back at part one to see the other five electric cars we looked at but this is the next five on our list um somewhat randomly chosen but all relatively sort of affordable i'd say typically in the 20s 30s edging into the 40s as far as price tag and i think they're intriguing all vehicles I would be happy going over to Europe and renting and driving around, puttering around the towns, because a lot of them are somewhat city cars. Europe just gets more of those. Here in the States, for those of you who don't know, we have huge, widespread highway networks, which requires big batteries, high speeds, because the only way to drive from where we are in Colorado to, say, where I'm from in Missouri is to get through 500 miles or so of Kansas flat ground which in Europe, you could traverse like 12 countries in that time, depending on where you are. So let's dive right in. How are you doing, Max? Max is here joining me, by the way, for those of you who are on audio. I'm AirPods <laughs> Max, doing great, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to dive right in. And yeah, I agree. You know, the States, we just get long stretches of road. We don't have as many chargers or as many good chargers as uh, many of our European uh, friends. So uh, as a result, I think we kind of, yeah, we tend to th at least think that we need extremely long range vehicles that in turn are quite expensive so it's nice to look at this side of the market not only because it's foreign but also because it prevents uh, presents a forbidden fruit that we don't really get just because of our infrastructure situation yep so for those of you who are tuning in visually you're in luck because we'll be showing visuals of these vehicles and we're going to start right off with the cupra which is a brand that is awesome has a very interesting logo i feel like this brand is like the, I don't know, the RGB gaming computer of electric cars in some ways. It's a Seat's like performance brand, right? Seat yeah, exactly. Being a Do you want a car manufacturer? I, I don't know much about them, but yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're under the Volkswagen umbrella. Um, and, it, you know, this does look like Volkswagen ID3 a bit, which we'll get to here in a bit in a couple cars. But um, yeah, very intriguing. Pretty hot and spicy, if I do say so myself. Pulling up some of the specs here, we have a 231 horsepower, uh, no, yeah, and 229 pound-feet of torque. So that's definitely hot hatch, um, I guess, power, if you will. 170 kilowatt is the power rating for those of you measuring kilowatts. And then um, 200 horsepower with 150 kilowatt for the base model, which is still plenty good. Um, that's you know, a compelling option, which is funny because that base model is the exact same powertrain as the more performance-y Volkswagen ID3 on which this seems to share a platform with. So 58 kilowatt hour battery pack, 125 kilowatt DC fast charging. That's entirely decent. Of course, it's not like the, you know, the, I, uh, the, the EV6 or the Ionic 5, which are just charging beasts. This is not using quite the leading edge architecture as those. But as far as range, we've got 425 kilometers WLTP, or you can spec it with a bigger battery pack, 77 kilowatt hours, and get 552 kilometers, which is something like 370 something ish miles. I don't have all the comparisons in my head. Zero to 60 in 6.6 seconds. That is entirely compelling and probably the fastest one on our list or one of the quickest. Um, and then it starts at 35,000. Granted, you'll be spending a bit more for the more performancey type one. But um, what do you think of this thing? What do you think of the color, by the way? It's kind of a matte blue with like orange ish copper accents. It's really interesting. Yeah, I think it's very slick. I agree with you. It's kind of a very like edgy brand. Uh, if for those who aren't familiar with Cupra, they've got quite the cool logo. And yeah, this like matte coloring, the rims that are this like copper tinge, they're really quite aggressive. And I think it lines up with the performance, which is so far, at least on our list, watch part one if you haven't already, <laughs> the spiciest car we looked at. So I'm a fan. Um, to take things down a few notches, we're going to switch over to Renault and the Zoe 
e-tech which is their electric vehicle um and it's definitely small i'm gonna say this is one of the more compact vehicles on our list at least for these five that we're looking at today and it, it almost has the you know it's one of those like four door hatchbacks that looks kind of like a two-door because the rear two doors are kind of a little bit smaller and the door handles like hidden in the frame of the window which is pretty common we see that you know with the toyota chr which i wish that was an electric vehicle by the way they do get it in hybrid in europe but um, not here in the states but uh yeah the zoe pretty intriguing vehicle um and i think it's fairly popular a lot of people seem to like it um of course it comes in at just a hair under thirty thousand pounds as far as price so maybe that's why it's one of the slightly more affordable ones plus you have any sort of incentives from the government what have you as far as specs we have 136 horsepower or 100 kilowatt motor and 181 pound feet of torque definitely not um super fast but it is lighter and smaller so i'm guessing it's still pretty engaging to drive definitely looks slightly sporty it's it's not my favorite design honestly um but it's it's effective it's slim it's easy to maneuver i'm sure easy to park um they have fun trims like techno and iconic which iconic looks a bit more intriguing has like kind of yellow accents which is interesting um and the 54 kilowatt hour battery which is actually a pretty big battery for this size car um and 50 kilowatt dc fast charging zero to 50 in 9.5 seconds or is that a typo <laughs> i think i meant um, to write zero to 60 but yeah okay it's not fast the zoe <laughs> I, uh, is a really interesting vehicle because it's one of the longest lived evs uh just globally They're, i think they made them uh since about 2000 the early 2010s uh but this new model that was 2019 and newer is a big improvement on it because it's a second generation platform so uh, i think renault has earned a lot of respect from budget conscious people who if you're in the know uh, and you're in Europe you kind of consider I think the Zoe is one of your obvious picks it's in that way very analogous to like what we might think of as the Nissan Leaf or the Chevy Bolt I think like for the European market this is the uh, strongest analog and uh, with that battery capacity with that range it really does I think deserve some credit yeah it's a really solid um, I guess range for what is projected as a city car exclusively of course you could do small road trips in it um, maybe even decent road trips if you're fine sitting and charging for a bit uh, i misspoke 52 kilowatt hour is the battery capacity 239 miles wltb range which is probably somewhat realistic in the city i'd love to actually range test this car i think that'd be really intriguing but moving right along to another thing under the volkswagen group umbrella is the id3 which is a car I really wish we had in the States. And I honestly think it might sell somewhat decently if we did have it because it's kind of in some ways an electric golf comparable sizing, of course, engineered from the ground up to be an EV, which is awesome. You know, some of the cars on this list are shared platforms with gas vehicles. This is an actual ground up EV um, similar to ID four. Of course we get the id4 in the states europe they get the id3 and the id5 as well so more options for you electric enthusiasts this looks very id4 but fixes some of the things i didn't love about the id4 i think it looks intriguing with these proportions and uh looks pretty spicy and uh i'm gonna say somewhat is not really that spicy 110 kilowatt or 148 horsepower 229 pound feet of torque of course for the pro performance you can get a 150 kilowatt motor which is the same as the front wheel drive id4 and 200 that's 200 horsepower with the same torque um, 55 kilowatt hour but up to 282 kilowatt hour battery and then 125 kilowatt dc fast charging so same as the cupra born we saw earlier and that gives you a 426 kilometer wltp range or 264 miles uh, i think that's with the bigger battery i believe um which is really impressive again for a city vehicle it's totally fine and then of course 0 to 60 time will range due to the varying performance capacities but anywhere from 7.9 to 9.6 seconds yep definitely pretty slow if you get the kind of base model but um still doable for city driving i mean you're not trying to do 70 to 90 mile an hour 
passing speeds on the highway in this thing. This is mostly going to be your putter around town or villages or wherever you're going. In most European places, it's going to do just fine, except perhaps the Autobahn, which is somewhat ironic because Volkswagen is right off the Autobahn. And the uh, price tag, finally, is uh, very compelling. 28420 Nice pounds price. And uh, that's pretty pretty solid. One of the cheaper ones on the list for sure. And I think pretty good bang for buck, kind of like the ID4. I think Volkswagen's doing a decent job. Now, some of my qualms with the ID models or just Volkswagen in general is the, the software. It's just not, not great. The car yacht situation is not solid. They keep having software issues. I just don't like using the software that much. Uh, but what do you think of ID3? And have you spent much time on ID4? I have not spent a ton of time in ID4, but I'm aware of the things that people love and don't love about it. I know it's, you know, a very pragmatic vehicle. ID3 is similar, but I kind of understand why Volkswagen doesn't have this in the U.S. If you think about what they've done with Gas Golf, there's no longer a Golf sold in the U.S. You can get a GTI, you can get a Golf R, but you can't get a non-spicy Golf because the sales were just really bad. Uh, and I think ID3 is a similar situation where as much as you or I would love to have it, I think a lot of people here it's frankly they just especially people who want an electric car and maybe aren't you know driving enthusiasts they don't really want a small hatchback in, in the u.s uh whereas it makes sense obviously in you know germany and plenty of european countries to have one so i think there's a missed opportunity maybe to for them to at least bring the pro performance trim to the u.s because i think if they had a gti equivalent right the id3 like the spicy edition uh that would be really cool the one with the bigger battery with the more performance. I think the starting price is good, but I think the big knock that I've at least read about these is that as you spec them out with the bigger battery and with um, the better trims, like pro performance, you just get up there in price. And at that point, you're competing in territory that I think is uh, just very competitive areas where I think Ford or Hyundai would suit you better. Yeah, I agree. Um... It would be so cool to see, just as an experiment, how well it would sell over here. I feel like my hopeful, th wishful thinking would say it'll sell great, but uh, in reality, probably not that much. But it is interesting to see what Volkswagen is doing, because on one hand, I don't know if they know what they're doing. I mean, their electrification strategy is a bit interesting. We'll have a whole podcast on Volkswagen's electrification strategy. And then they have, yeah, randomly the Golf GTI and Golf R as like spicy options. Of course, the manual Golf R, which we only have in the States, not Europe. So I guess that's a car that they're jealous of. <laughs> and then the weird things like Taos, Tiguan, every CUV with a T name. Um and then they have the convertible T-Cross. That's still a thing in Europe uh, where it's like their version of the Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. I don't know what Volkswagen is doing. <laughs> but I love ID3. It's playful. It's fun. You know, they have this fun blue color, as you can see on the screen, with the cool kind of almost star or pentagon wheels. I really enjoy it. Uh, I'm just glad it exists for what it is. <laughs> Um, but let's jump into one I'm not super familiar with, but it's been good reading about it, and that's the MG4. So MG is a brand still around. A lot of us in the States only think of them as someone that made little roadsters in like the 70s. But um, no, they're still building cars. In fact, they're building a few electric ones like the MG4 and the MG5. Uh, and the MG, I think ZS is another one. But this is the MG4 EV 100% electric hatchback. Um, I, I wish I could pull off a green outfit like this girl on the screen. And it's a bright orange color, which is cool. I like she seeing cars with colors. E, though. I don't know what she's doing. In yeah, the MG4. She, she showed up for the wrong ad. <laughs> but um, yeah, MG4 from 25,995 um, pounds, which is a great price. Um, but I guess we'll judge that when we look at, oh, another person with a green shirt <laughs> doing a review. A um, couple different ranges with a couple different, it's cool that it'll tell you the trim and then you choose your driving style and that's what will tell you how far you can go, which is cool. So up to 365 miles if you're just going through 365 miles of slow moving traffic. But anyways, let's look at the specs here. For this, it is a 168 horsepower or 125 kilowatt um, and then 184 pound-feet of torque. 
Now you can also opt for a bigger battery with more power, 150 kilowatt or 200 ish horsepower, and then a 51 kilowatt hour battery, which can be configured up to again, bigger battery, 64 kilowatt hour and the range 218 miles, which is not class leading, but again, it's a cheaper car and then 281 miles in the longer range, bigger battery. That's actually pretty solid. And the price tag, which the 26,000 pounds price is for the smaller battery. Um, I'm not sure what the bigger battery ups it up to, but um, I'm intrigued. I really think MG is a cool brand. They've always been cool and trying to do things a little bit differently. This thing doesn't feel super different. In fact, it actually looks like an Arc Fox a little bit from the front. That's a Chinese company um, that we've driven a bit before. But um, yeah, just cool that there's colors and I guess each trim. Yeah. Oh, there we go. The orange one, you have to go trophy long range. That's how you trophy unlock Trophy long range orange. is the apex of their lineup. So you can get the trophy long range, the non-trophy long range, if you're not a winner, and then the standard <laughs> one, which is that $26,000 one. $26, but the long, sorry. Yeah, but the, the long range only ups it by 2,500 pounds, and the trophy ups it by a total of about 5,000 pounds, which gives you even more things like 360-degree camera, satellite, heated front seats and steering wheel, typical things like that. But it's fun seeing a few different engaging colors. Uh, although it's not really rendering. Oh, there we go. It's just slow. Their website's slow. Um, but yeah, how, how do you like this MG styling, Max? It's a bit polarizing, if, I, if you ask me. I think it's cool. It's futuristic. I agree with you. It's reminiscent of some of that um, Chinese DNA, like the um, like the Fox, and I think if I have this right, I don't know too much about MGI there, but I think part of the resurrection of their brand has been done with uh, at least some amount of basically Chinese funding. So I think there's some cross collaboration going on with how they're building this platform. Uh, so that is also just super compelling, basically because of the price they're able to deliver this at. In terms of dollar for range, I think this is just about killing everything else in that market. Uh, and it's kind of impressive. So also the zero to 60 being uh, 7.5 seconds, it's not like it's slow either. So this is a really yeah. compelling hatchback. They have a whole lineup. I think they have an MG5 as well now. So MG you know, is doing very interesting stuff over in the UK right now. Yeah, just for a quick look, um, you can see the, the MG5 and the MG ZS, or as they say, ZS. Those are both intriguing. Really just CUVs, hatchbacks everywhere. That's all they sell now, which is funny because MG used to be the Roadster, like tiny car that I've always loved. Um, I wish, you know, if any brand could bring an electric sports car to life, I hope it's MG. I think that would be super cool. And I'd honestly, maybe I just moved to England for that. But Let's round it out with one final vehicle on this list of 10. Again, this is part two. So if you missed the first five, go check out that part. And that would be the smart, the new smart hashtag one, um, which I guess is what, what they're calling it. Now it's, it's not quite out yet, but I feel like it was still worth including because it's coming. Smart is awesome. Kyle has a smart 4.2 electric. That is a lot of fun. Rear wheel drive, um, convertible, basically a, you know, and yeah, rear wheel drive, rear motor convertible. So basically Kyle drives an electric 911, uh, <laughs> but the, um, yeah, the smart hashtag one, which is that really what they're calling it? Like you have to say the hashtag. They insist on hashtag, not pound sign. That's interesting because I feel like people are just going to call it the smart number one. And then if you look up the people start Googling this, it's going to start pulling up headlines about how it's the quote unquote number one EV. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an alt to uh, like Peugeot E2008, which is a smaller version of the 208 that we looked at earlier and the mini countryman. <clears throat> but this is, uh, yeah, the new probably biggest vehicle smart is making. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Probably one of my favorite looking vehicles on this list. Very unique wheels that I really like. Um, and, uh, a really cool, like kind of sage green color, which I, yeah, I'm a big fan. The black roof, the two tone effect works well on these cars, I think. Um, and then of course there's a two tone, like kind of matte gray with red accents. Uh, and you can even get 19 inch wheels really on a car this small. 
So let's talk specs really quick with an asterisk because there's two very different versions coming. Um, the smart number one will have 272 horsepower and 253 pound feet of torque. Those are really good numbers for a car of this size. Again, roughly mini countryman ish. But then there's a Brabus version that'll be four wheel drive with 428 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. That is incredible. Uh, 64 kilowatt hour battery with up to 150 kilowatt DC fast charging. That's also pretty class leading. Um, and then 273 miles of range WLTP, 248 with the Brabus because more power, baby. And 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds as the standard model, which is really good. And then 3.9 seconds with Brabus, which is absolutely blowing away the rest of the competition in this whole list. Now, 35,000 pounds price starting. Brabus will probably be a lot more expensive, but I am so intrigued. I mean, look at this interior, the fun, like pixelated seats and even the pixel design in the panoramic roof in some way. It's really interesting. Uh, very light colors on the interior, at least in that one they're showing off. Um, ah, what, well, yeah. What do you think of this thing? And prove me wrong. A perfect two car solution is this smart hashtag one Brabus alongside a smart roadster brabus coupe exclusive <laughs> it's hard to argue with that though i don't know about the repair bills on the latter one of those but i think that this <laughs> is a super super uh compelling ev and a really smart market segment for them to go after because um it's mini countrymen that's what it is in size class and it's beating mini to market because there's no electric you know next gen countrymen yet but i the rumors are that's what Mini's kind of doing because that's where the money is, uh, making these small kind of SUVs. But Smart has kind of beaten them to the punch. So it's really good, well-played effort by Mercedes and Geely, which is a collaboration between and a nice way to kind of resurrect the Smart brand. Because the Ford 2, I think, is one of the most iconic vehicles of the 2000s. People either love them or hate them. Uh, I think you know which way Kyle stands on it have him owning one uh, but having this be uh just a more sensible size classy vehicle longer range even if it's price here is smart basically they're kind of going after what mini used to be uh in their heyday uh under bmw that is which is premium small ish but not that small and just sporty so i think this is really smart and it's nice to see that smart is getting a second life as an electric brand and kind of beating mini it seems at their own game you kept saying it's really smart and i think that's like a fantastic pun intended um it's smart i'm trying to smart to do this yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm pulling up a photo for reference this is the smart roadster coupe brabus exclusive my favorite car that i drove when i was in europe it is not electric it is a three-cylinder mid-engine turbo gas engine oh. but i would I mean, EV swapping this with the new smart hashtag one Brabus drivetrain would be the spiciest, fieriest thing imaginable. And I would love to see that. In fact, there's actually an entire group of people who are buying these smart roadsters and smart roadster coupes and EV swapping them with other random components, different things from other companies. Um, some are using drivetrains from like the smart 4.2 electric that Kyle has. But um, that, yeah, that would be an ultimate quirky two-car solution in my mind. So uh, yeah, final thoughts of the 10 cars we looked at, Max. Would you, uh, would you drive home in one over another? Uh, yeah, honestly, I was really pleasantly surprised by that Cupra to say um, I think that is a super, super interesting looking but also compelling sporty cheaper ev but all the ones we looked at are kind of interesting and fall into a very similar niche i feel like everything we're looking at is a hatchback or a small cuv style thing at a 30 to forty thousand pound price uh some of them like the smart rising a little bit above that but i think this is all a super interesting space totally unfilled in the u.s right now i can't really think of a great modern uh, electric hatchback with good range aside from the Chevy Bolt uh, in the US at the moment. Everyone wants to make stuff that's just a little bit bigger. So it's nice to see all of these smaller, more affordable EVs that um, everyone in Europe is just so lucky to get. Yeah, 
I guess I'll summarize with that. It fills my mind with wishful thinking, uh, makes me excited to go back to Europe again. I mean, the first time I went, my face was just glued to the windshield. Thankfully, I wasn't driving. Um, looking at all the beautiful vehicles we don't get, which is ironic because most of them weren't beautiful, but they were just, they're different, which is why it's intriguing to me. So leave all your comments about what you think of this list of cars. What did we leave off? Obviously, we left off a lot because we just can't, we could do a 12 hour documentary of all your cool cars, but um, I frankly don't have the voice for that and uh, we don't have the time, but let us know what your favorites are from these lists from part one and part two. And uh, what cars did we leave off? What cars would you like us to cover in the future? Because we love research. We love seeing what's out there and hopefully we can get back over to Europe and drive more cars in the near future. What do you think, Max? Call a day. I think it's that's a long a day to leave it off. We do have like, you know, there's more cars to look at in Europe. There's also like uh, other markets to look at South America, China, uh, India. Yeah. I mean, the ton of stuff we could look at. So let us know what you want to see next. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for joining Max and we'll see all of you guys in another show very soon. Cheers. Mm-hmm.